Hey, welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus all the way over here in chapter 22. And today, verses 9 to 13, we're looking at some property laws. And again, if we go back to the uh, devotional on 22, verses 1 to 4, I quoted extensively from uh, from this commentary. I'm not going to do that to this morning. But um, very interesting comparing the Hebrew approach, God's approach to the laws uh, with modern law. And, and really, in many ways, it appears that the Hebrew way is much superior based very much more on restitution rather than imprisonment. Anyway, let's read this out here and look at it. For every breach of trust, whether it is for ox or for donkey, for sheep, for clothing, or for any lost thing about which one says this is it, the case of both parties shall come before the judges. He whom the judges condemn shall pay double to his neighbor. If a man gives his neighbor a donkey, an ox, a sheep, or any animal to keep for him, and it dies or is hurt or is driven away while no one is looking, an oath before the Lord shall be made by the two of them that he has not laid hands on his neighbor's property, and its owner shall accept it, and he shall not make restitution. But if it is actually stolen from him, he shall make restitution to its owner. If it is all torn to pieces, let him bring it as evidence, and he shall not make restitution for what has been torn to pieces. Okay, so here we have more cases we've been looking at morning by morning. And here we have cases uh, where uh, there is an oath taken. And the people both come before the judges. And, and the judges will dis determine what the case is. They'll decide. So here we have a crime kind of a situation where uh, we have multiple persons. They come before the judges. And the judges have to make a decision. But then what happens if the judges struggle to decide, and what happens if if you have the the different parties all swearing an oath that you know uh, to to support their viewpoint, and the judges really don't know, what do you do then? And so what we have here is, and you might say, well, oh, well, how do we know they're not lying? Well, and that's the case here is that so in our day, lying is done so rapidly, so easily, without blinking. Uh, people sleep like little babies after they've lied all day long, right? So lying and even saying and swearing in God's name and taking an oath in God's name today, people just, many people will just do that at the drop of a hat. This is not the way it was at this time. Uh, if you were to actually, you know, stand up and swear an oath to God, that was just gigantic. You people would not randomly do that. Uh, usually, perhaps what would happen would be they would come and they would make their case, and then the judges would say, are you willing to swear an oath to that? And it, when you got to that spot, if it, if it hadn't sorted out before that time, probably the one who, uh, the one who was guilty would usually relent because, look, you've got two choices here, right? Either I'm in enmity with my fellow man, or I'm, uh, I, I am amplifying this by lying to God and becoming at directly at in enmity with God. So most people would not do that. They would instead back off and say, okay, I'm the guilty party. I will, and they would take the penalty, right? So, uh, but if all the parties say, well, they swear their oath and, and the judges can't really figure it out, what happens then? Well, what it looks like here is that the case just is more or less suspended. You know what you have in that case is it's not that the crime won't be punished, but now you have obviously one party would be lying, and now that person is placing themselves in an enemy situation, an enemy status with God, and so God himself will bring vengeance upon that person. God will uh, sort the details out, and most people who believe there is a God, and these people had actually seen him intervene, the 10 plagues, right? Uh, crossing the Red Seas, making the making a path through. The, these people had seen God's miracles so many times that they knew there was a God. And so they were not just keen to just go against God and just uh, d disregard him and, and make God, who they knew was real, make him their enemy because, <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, people would not normally perhaps come to that situation where you have a case where we can't find the guilty party. But if they did, the judges would back off because they both sworn the oath, right? We read about it there. And it was left with God. That is the most dangerous case of all. I remember one case in one of my churches 
we had a case of church discipline. I won't give you the details, but uh, we made the case, the leaders of the church made the case very clearly um, that something should happen, and the congregation missed it by actually only just a couple of votes uh, because they, the church itself in business votes uh, what to do about a case of church discipline. Uh, and so when it was over, what did we do? Well, we stuck with, you know, the rules. We left it alone, and we left it with God. That person was now not only at enmity with uh, the situation there, but uh, they were now directly in God's hands. And indeed, after that, after that uh, occasion, uh, there was seemed to be uh, evidence that uh, the thing the thing fell apart, and, and it, there was, I think, a divine intervention. So we were right, but the congregation did not at that point. They were very close. Where am I going with that? I'm just trying to say that I would rather be at peace with God and to lie to God to sustain your position is, is very untenable. Today, people do it so easily, but here we find uh, God is on his throne, and you do not want God to enlist God. Why would you enlist God as your enemy? Take your punishment, you know, and don't do that thing. You know, you can avoid trouble if you don't do the troubling thing, right? Okay, we'll see you tomorrow morning for a couple more verses as we are working our way through the book of Exodus.